Ali Mehmet Han sahibi. Şükriye <gülüyor> Cenab-ı Kerim'in sahibi. दो मलिक साहब प्लीज आप बहुत आसान तरीके से हाउस चल रही है आप प्रोटेस्ट ना करें दो अपोजिशन की तरफ से एक ट्रेजरी की तरफ से नहीं तो आप नहीं आप नो की कश्मीर के लिए प्लीज आप सेल्फ डिटर्मिनेशन का एक दिन है मेरी एक हम्बल सबमिशन और तवीज़ ये होगी कि ऑनरेबल मेंबर साहिबान अगर कोई इस पर अपनी राय देना चाहें वो बोल बोल लें मैं अपनी एक राय का चाहूँगा अगर आप चाहते हैं दोबारा भी शाह साहब आके दोबारा भी रिस्पॉन्ड कर देंगे कोई इशू नहीं है जी बिल्कुल रहमान रहीम आई वुड नॉट टेक मच टाइम सर टुडे इज़ द फिफ्थ ऑफ जनवरी इंटरनेशनल डे विच इज़ बीन एक्लेम्ड एट नन लेसर नन लेसर दैन लेवल ऑफ यूनाइट नेशन अराउंड सेवेंटी वन ईयर्स गो सर सो so i would uh, sir i would like to say here that this is an issue which is long pending since 70 years sir this is not a land dispute i would like to i would like to raise this issue on the floor of the upper house of islamic republic of pakistan not as a representative of a government but as a citizen of this state and reminding the world the burden as we used to her that there is a white man's burden this is a collective burden of the white and the and the black man this is something which has been pending since long i want to remind the world that this is not a land dispute i am saying it again it is concerning the right of self determination as the modern world they stand up and they speak up for the right of the self determination for different nations in the last 30 40 or 50 years even in the last decade or so we have seen countries and nations realizing their dreams of self determination the country in which i am standing is one of the biggest and the mightiest alhamdulillah countries in the world the, the only superpower in terms of nuclear power in the muslim world but when this pakistan didn't came into existence in 1947 and whole this area was called the indo pak sub indian subcontinent and in 1947 when this great nation came into being the pakistani independence movement started way back in 1940 when we passed our resolution in lahore but i want to remind the world that the struggle the freedom movement started the kashmiri freedom movement started around two decades ago before the pakistani movement started before the indian subcontinent got its, its independence from the british raj in 1947 in 1929 the kashmiri struggle for self independence started self determination started this was a plan this was a commitment which was the whole world with the people of kashmir and the muslims of the indian subcontinent that all those areas who have majority of muslim population they will decide their fate with a vote and will they vote for india or will they vote for pakistan and when the freedom movement started in kashmir and when it boiled up to the limit in 1947 and 48 not us but the leaders of the modern india so called secular india they went and they committed and not a lesser level than that of a prime minister of india mr jawahar lal nehru he went there and he committed on the floor of united nations on behalf of the indian government and indian nation that they will give the right of self determination to the people of kashmir according to the according to the plan devised at that time through which the whole indian subcontinent was divided basically into two india and pakistan so i want to ask 
the world that is your uh, realization and your your dreams of self determination and your and your your thinking of freedom movements restricted to your own self interest you must realize that here you are talking about two big nations both of them nuclearly armed and because of this crisis of kashmir we have at least went to war full fledged war at least twice or thrice in our history and it's a nuclear flashpoint people talk about the freedom movement in the south africa people talk about nelson mandela there was only one nelson mandela in south africa there are many of them being incarcerated in the indian occupied kashmir the great lady by the name of asia and the rabi who's been there incarcerated collectively for around 25 odd years behind the bars her husband dr qasim faktu he is there around 25 years behind the bars collectively you have old man at the around the age of 85 to 90 years mr ali gilani who is incarcerated behind bars you have young men who become old in their youth your people like yasin malik your people like me rise umar farooq i want to remind the world that these are the names of the modern day independence movement i would say not only taking not only taking their 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 level of freedom movement to another level which has which the world has never saw before but at the one time at the one hand when you have people like those political workers who are prisoners of cautious facing the indian brutalities in the in the in the in the jail like the har jail where they don't even provide them warm clothing in these winters then you have people like burhan muzaffar wani and naiku everybody does not go and start a political movement the youth has a level of tolerance you have political movement and you have a, a freedom movement inside kashmir which is self indigenous nobody is supporting it outside the borders line of control it is a self indigenous independence movement i want to remind the world that there are many faiths in the world there are muslims there are christians there are jews there are hindus they bury their dead according to their according to their religious norms in our religion islam and in some other religions like christianity we bury our we we bury our dead in the wrapped in coffins i want to remind the world that when the people in indian occupied kashmir they get martyred they don't like to be get wrapped in white coffins they get wrapped in the flags of islamic republic of pakistan is there any bigger plebiscite than this when the indian government and the indian state has not fulfilled its promise look what the kashmiris have done look what look what they have selected their coffin has become their ballot paper their grave has become their ballot box they have decided where go and that they are deciding it every day every day every passing day and i want to remind the indians and i want to tell mr narendra modi that no, no matter what you do no matter how aggression no matter how much aggression no matter how much suppression you exercise the history of the world is replete with one example if there is a genuine freedom movement nobody has ever stopped it it will inshallah succeed one day but in that matter in the course of that matter what we foresee what we what we want to forewarn the world is that i hope that it this nuclear flashpoint does not realize its its, its reality because then the sufferers will not only be india and pakistan it will be the whole world when will this promise be fulfilled at this moment i want also want to acknowledge in the the kashmiri diaspora who are struggling from the core of their heart not only in the indian occupied kashmir but in the mainland india and also in the countries like uk and us where you have a lot of kashmiris they are they are settled there some of them are prisoner of cautious some of them have taken political uh, asylum there 
So now is the time that the world must realize. And we as Muslims, I also want to remind the Muslim Ummah that as our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu had once said, and it is narrated in Sahih Bukhari, that the Muslims are just like a one, one whole body. And when there's pain in one part of the body, the whole body feels the pain. The Kashmiris have suffered for too long. The founder of the nation, Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, when he was dying, when he was breathing his last, his sister, Ms. Fatima Jinnah, narrated in her, in her book, My Brother, in which she was saying that few of the last words of the Qaid were Kashmir, Muhajireen, those who are migrating from India to Pakistan and Palestine. The founder of Pakistan, who is not only a leader of Pakistan, but leader of the modern day Muslim Ummah, he declared Kashmir to be the juggler vein of Pakistan. And in one of his most famous speeches in 30th October 1947, when he was talking about many different things, I want to remind the people of Pakistan that what did the Qaid, what did their leaders said about the mode of their life, and this, can, this is something from which we can, we, can always, we can always take inspiration. In which he said that you must not be overwhelmed by the enormity of the situation, no matter how much mighty or powerful your enemy is, because he is reminding us that our history is replete with examples of many nations who have realized the right to self-determination. And in this very speech, he's also saying that we must sacrifice, if at all required, all which we have for the cause of Islam and the cause of Pakistan, making Pakistan the bulwark of Islam. This is that very famous speech in which he says that there is no power on earth which can undo Pakistan. And Pakistan is not complete without Kashmir. This is for the people of Pakistan. Kashmir is the juggler vein of Pakistan and without, without Kashmir getting its independence from the Indian might, which is I want to remind the world that those stories of the past, when you had people being butchered and killed, and you had those stories of ethnic cleansings, they are repeating them in the Indian occupied Kashmir. The Indian army is using rape as a tool of war. They are using rape to brutalize the people of Kashmir. To make them understand that they have to, they, they, they have to bow their head in front of Indian aggression. When in the middle of the night, the Indian armies, I would say they're, they're, they're shameless creatures who wear the uniform of the Indian army. They come and they rape and maim. What is the point of raping an 80 or 85 year old lady in front of their grandchildren? They only want to give the message that leave your freedom struggle, which they will not. And now they are doing, they are also doing ethnic cleansing. They are bringing demographic changes. As a Muslim, I think this is our duty. This is for the whole Muslim Ummah, Your Honor. That one day Allah will also ask. All these things, all these things will perish one day. These ministries, these big houses. There will be a day of judgment. On which we will be asked, what did we do for all the oppressed people of the world? And the most oppressed people in the world at the moment are Kashmiris. I, was, I, was, I would like to remind the people of Pakistan. And in this one, in this one uh, couplet of uh, Iqbal, who is our uh, national poet, I think the whole philosophy is there. We'll have to fight for the, for the rights of the people of Kashmir with all the diplomatic norms, all the political norms, the peaceful norms. But we also have to remind ourselves that taqdeer ke qazi ka ye fitwa hai azal se. Taqdeer ke qazi ka ye fitwa hai azal se. Hai jurm zaifi ki saza, marge mafajat. So a strong Pakistan is a guarantee for the independence of Kashmir. And I again want to remind the world and everybody else, that it's not a border dispute, it's not a land dispute. Pakistan does not want to annex any land. 
It's basically an unfinished agenda which is a burden upon the people of the world for the last 72, 71 years. I hope and I pray that we, as we are standing here in the upper house of Pakistan, we plan as a Pakistani, we make strategic planning, and we, and we set strategic goals. We should not be expanded for 50 or 30 or 25 years old. We should make a plan, the opposition and the government, a collective plan. How can we support, according to United Nations resolutions, according to the, to, the, to the laws of the world, how can we support the just and righteous Kashmiri freedom movement? And for that, the whole nation, the whole state, the opposition, the government, and the government agencies, departments, everybody, and all the Muslims who believe, and all the human beings who believe in the, in the independence of human beings and the right of self-determination, I think this is now the time to set the goals because timing, uh, time is passing by and they, they, their, their, uh, their, their, hopes, their hopes are reaching their limits. They're waiting for us. The Kashmiris are waiting for us. When we talk here in the upper house or in the lower house of Pakistan, they don't look towards any other place in the world, believe me. They only look towards Pakistan. And when an 85-year-old man, Ali Gilani, says that hum Pakistani, Pakistan hamara hai, I think that sums it all. Thank you so much. Pakistan, Zindabad, Inshallah, Kashmir, Manega, Pakistan. Thank you.